to the screen. So I've asked uh, this delightful question on on um, uh, gurus and beards, which is uh, which is kind of uh, why do a lot of spiritual teachers have these big sort of beards? You know that actually it's true. Quite a lot of them do actually have these beards, and often when they're younger, they don't have these big beards. And could this potentially be just a fashion <laughs> fashion? where all the gurus, you know, that the mega gurus are just having these big fashionable, the guru beard uh, that they grow, or is, it, um, or is it that they've lost identification with the body? They don't care any longer. It's not a big deal. And I think uh, it can, it's, I think for the, what I would say for the true gurus, a lot of them, um, what they'll be, I mean, some, there's different pathways to enlightenment. One of them is the path, through the pathway of asceticism, uh, which is letting go of all the desires and cravings for anything in the world and all the attachments that one has. So, the, you know, one could be doing a lot of work. If one is very conscious as a human being of what other people think of me and that I must look neat and tidy, and uh, then there can be a lot of energy and a lot of belief systems that are like, I have to look perfect. I have to um, give a thing or otherwise, what will others think of me? Or there can be a lot of programs from, from parents. You've got to look good at all times. Otherwise you're, you're going to be disgraced or whatever it is. So that can be a lot of baggage in the ego, which means that's going to preclude you from getting to these very high elevated states. So with some of these uh, spiritual teachers, they'll do a lot of clearing work just to clear out all the beliefs of what others think of them, attachment to the body, attachment to appearance. Uh, also, as you get into these very high spiritual states, uh, sometimes, it, unless, unless it happens intuitively, sometimes there can be in these very high states, <clears throat> a lack of a need to track and, and look after uh, the physical appearance of the body and all other things. I mean, quite happy. Quite often when you get to these mystical states, <clears throat> it's like grace or the universe takes care <clears throat> of all the details. Food appears from somewhere, accommodation appears from somewhere, and you can be like a hippie going around doing uh, God's work and yet not sort of um, being like a, what would seem to be a normal human being with a nine to five job and, and a good sort of clean face and a corporate career, whatever it may be. So. I think a lot of them do because they, um, you know, the energy and investment to keep a good appearance, suddenly that can seem quite meaningless. Um, also, they, they, it's, it's quite obvious with these gurus, I've met a lot of them, and, um, you know, they emit such beautiful energy that, uh, you know, what really happens is, you know, I see the beauty in these people because when you're in the presence of someone who's emitting that much light and love, um, your level of consciousness temporarily goes much higher and you see them in divine light. So you see the, you know, even if they've got a beard and a bit of scraggy hair, you see that they actually look extremely beautiful. And that's because um, the amount of light and power they emit sends you off into a much higher state of consciousness and everything looks beautiful in those states. Whether a man has a big beard or no beard, is young or old, uh, crippled or non-crippled, the beauty intrinsic in everything uh, is, is seen to be absolutely stunningly beautiful in those mystical spiritual states. Now, I do think there are what I call false gurus uh, who, may, um, who may be just uh, not the real deal, shall we say, and are um, maybe just trying to put on a show to hook in all the naive, naive spiritual seekers um, and by, you know, maybe growing a, a guru beard and trying to look like a guru and wear some robes and stick some incense on and uh, do, you know, and is obviously, there'll be something out. If you're a sophisticated spiritual aspirant, you'll feel that there's something wrong with the spiritual teacher because, you know, uh, he's, after your, he's after your money, he's after your property, or, or he's just a control freak, whatever it is. So you'll spot something wrong. So they might look like a guru or, or try to be looking like a guru, but uh, you know, and they're trying to pull in naive spiritual seekers. So that wouldn't be it. I mean, I think it's also possible that some people can be in very high enlightened states and have a, have a, shape, a shape thing. I mean, as long as it's meaningless to them and they're not, you know, it's not a thing that they, their egos are invested in, then that can also happen. 
but it does, you know, I think if you do a lot of mystical work around clearing things like with appearance and what others think of you and just being coming non-identified with the body and appearance and making it meaningless, I mean, that's very, very easy for big beards and to look a bit sort of shaggy uh, can happen. But uh, it doesn't really affect them because if they're real deal, you'll still fall in love with them because their energy uh, will just catapult you up into these mystical states. I remember one of the spiritual teachers I used to meet in London would just send me off into a state of bliss for the whole week and miracles after miracles would happen. You know, of course, uh, you know, he'd be, he's, um, it's not about worshipping the guru as a body, but if you just meet someone with a big beard and you just have miracles and go into a state of bliss, how can you not love them? So, um, so I think uh, that's a good thing. I don't think it's um, necessarily... I mean, I think, um, yeah, that's my view on it. I mean, there can be real gurus with, with big beards and there can be false gurus growing big beards to look like a guru and to get some kind of payoff from that. So I thought that was a great 